Hello viewers, welcome to the session with Yo Sensei. In today's tutorial, we shall delve into preparing Rhino 8 project for rendering in Twinmotion. Our focus will be on utilizing Datasmith Explorer plugin to seamlessly export data from Rhino to Twinmotion. Furthermore, we will explore the import settings within Twinmotion as well as discussing procedures for updating and reimporting files. Okay, let's get started. First, we would like to download the Twinmotion Datasmith Exporter plugin for Rhino. The link is in the description of this video, so please go ahead and download that. So Datasmith uh, Exporter for Rhino, uh, you can either download for Windows or Mac and uh, install it. So once you have installed that, when you open Rhino, you will see this kind of window that, that says uh, Datasmith commands so that you can just dock this into one of the top shelves so that you can have access to these commands. So we are going to open the file that is called dp02 retail space finished. This you can also find from the description uh, of the video. So we have this file and uh, this file is organized in, it's a kind of a retail space with, you know, loft space with some lighting and outdoor, outdoor space and sod elements and things like that. Also, the way this file is organized is that this file has all of the uh, materials assigned to it and the facade has this metal aluminum layer and then each layer has material properties as, uh, attached to it so that they are unique material of, of, of own. One thing that I want you to really check when you're exporting Rhino file into Twinmotion is that sometimes your materials are assigned by dragging and dropping which cancels the application of material by the layers. So in this case, what you'd like to do is to select everything and go to properties and then under materials, make sure to all of the materials are assigned by layers, use layer materials. So this is going to help you some conflict of materials when you import this into Twinmotion. So now what I would like to do is to select all of these and then go into the Datasmith and then use export 3D view. And then DP to retail uh, space, and then this will save as a Datasmith file. As an example, I am going to save export this as STL, like we normally do, and try to see the difference. Export selected, and then Uh, that's SDL. And then the time that takes to uh, export SDL is longer. And then it's going to uh, export. I think if we go with binary, it's going to export at 132 megabytes, which is a pretty big file. This file is only 52 megabytes. And then when you actually try to compare the difference, size difference between Datasmith is 907 kilobytes. It's actually even less than one megabyte. And then SDL is 120 megabytes. So it's almost about 130 times less size, you know, file size, which is pretty amazing. So, now we have exported this as a Datasmith file. We can go ahead and open Twinmotion. The version that, of the Twinmotion that I'm using is Twinmotion Educational 2023.2.2. Okay, so we will create a new scene. And then I go into Import tab, uh, click Import. So now 
what we would like to do is to just regularly open this thing. And select this data smith file, open. And then in this case, what we would like to do is to, in terms of collapse, we would like to keep hierarchy for precision UVs on. For precision normals, okay. Process all, light setting, use original, and then just import. But keep hierarchy is the main thing. So now we have this file imported. So these are unnecessary starting base stuff, so you can take, just get rid of it. And then you can go inside of the twin motion and, you know, you can start assigning materials and things. So, and then we can just do a few materials. So one thing about the material application in this scheme where we keep hierarchy, let's do by this example. So I'm going to assign this metal material into this group of objects. So these objects here are grouped within Rhino by the material layer. So if you apply the material, it's going to replace all of these materials within the same layer. But sometimes we would like to, you know, we just make mistakes or we would like to just change objects layer. What we can do is you can go into this double circle here, replace material versus apply to object. So if you have imported this object as deep hierarchy, you are able to apply to object and then change, you know, material, materiality of it by objects, which is a very useful thing. Okay. Another thing, but in this case, if we want to change the material of this chandelier, it's kind of hard to do it because, you know, there are a lot of pieces and then you know if you have to click everything to do it that would be not fun so in twin motion you can either control click to add to selection or you can find this object from outliner and then select everything within this outliner so in this case if we have these uh, objects uh, selected uh, you can then click on this circle again and then change it to apply to selection so that will let you apply uh, these objects to whatever um, that is selected so that is uh, the uh, material uh, application um, tips so if we want to update something within rhino what can we do so uh, for example, we would like to change uh, the scale of this uh, table. It's a little bit too big. So I'm going to do uh, scale 2D in Rhino. Okay, like in two dimensional. So height is same, you know, the, the scale of the table is smaller. So now what I'm going to do is to select this guy, everything, and then go to data smith, export 3D view update this 3D view by overriding it and then go back to twin motion and then under import you can reload this so the table is smaller now and you, can, um, you know after the, the rhino file export data smith and then you can reopen that in rhino so that this was a very simple and quick tutorial on how to prepare the file in Rhino and then using the data smith exporter and then importing that into Twinmotion. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.